The clock is ticking. Just a few games left before madness sets in. And the pressure to win now is enormous. Tonight's ACC matchup has all the makings of a historic hardcore drama. Both coaches are veterans of big games. Maryland and North Carolina have a rivalry for the ages. The Turpins have their backs against the wall. The Tar Heels tournament path rests on the back of rookie Tyler Hansbrough. Can Maryland win on the road against 21st ranked North Carolina? The exciting battle begins now on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. on favorite for freshman of the year in the Atlantic Coast Conference, Tyler Hansbrough, preparing for tonight's game against the Maryland Terrapins, a bubblicious team in the middle of the pack on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. As you look at the accurate standings, it underscores the importance of the game for Maryland. They need to get to 8-8 eight and eight in the league, and North Carolina has established themselves as the second best team in the conference. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Brando. It's great to have you with us. We've got two teams going in different directions. North Carolina has been one of the hottest teams in this league for the last three weeks. Maryland has lost six of their last eight. They need a top 50 RPI win. This could be just what the doctor ordered. Dan Bonner by my side. The G-man is on his way, but Dan, there's no doubt that North Carolina is playing their best basketball right now. No, Tim, you're absolutely right. They've got it going, and a big reason they've got it going is they're veteran guys. All this talk about the young players, but Rayshon Terry and David Noel have been outstanding recently, and you look at their numbers through the first 19 games of the season and then the last five, and I, it's a perfect illustration of what we're talking about. The scoring average is up, the rebounding averages are up, and I'll tell you what, I think the leadership quotient is up as well. I think you're absolutely right. Now, with Maryland, they've had problems protecting the basketball since the loss of Chris McCray, especially on defense, they've missed him. Do you think they're going to pressure that Maryland backcourt tonight, North Carolina? I think so, and the pressure really is going to be the pace of the game. North Carolina is going to want to play quickly, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on D.J. Strawberry to make decisions in transition, and both decisions offensively and defensively, I think he's key tonight. Well, he scored, Tyler Hansbro did, 40 points as a freshman in this building, most ever. When we come back, Jim Hilbert will have more on Tyler Hansbro, his presence and importance here in Carolina. We're back in Chapel Hill, a little bit of blue heaven on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Here's a look at Tyler Hinesborough. What an outstanding freshman year he's had. And with more on Tyler, outside the Dean Smith Center, the fourth member of our broadcast team tonight, Jim Hildreth. Jim, what's going on out there? Well, Tim, I've been talking to North Carolina fans out here, and you know there's one guy that they all want to talk about. You can probably guess who it is. UNC freshman Tyler Hansbro, and why not? Hansbro just broke an ACC freshman record by scoring 40 points against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets last week. That performance obviously ranks him number one all-time at North Carolina as well. If you want to see some of the guys that he passed on that list for performances by a North Carolina freshman, we'll take a look. Walter Davis, Antoine Jameson, but Tyler Hansbro is number one, and that's pretty much where he fits in the minds of the Carolina fans, too. Uh, well, as a rookie, so far so good. I think he'll probably be one of the top 15 all-time basketball players in the history of North Carolina. He can do it all. The guy's got good hands. He's got good feet. He can do it all. Because he's the best freshman ever. How come? Because he he can. He doesn't care if people are bigger than him, and he always he never quits. Well, he's darn good, I will say that. I don't know about the best ever, but he's good. I'm the only turf fan in North Carolina. And I wish they didn't have hands, bro. I wish he was playing for Maryland. Well, Carolina fans definitely love Tyler Hands, bro. What do you guys think? Are you loving him, too? I thought so. Well, the Carolina fans are ready to get inside the Dean Dome and get this game going against Maryland. It's Carolina and Maryland coming up on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by OnStar Vehicle Diagnostics, a service that runs hundreds of diagnostic checks of your vehicle and emails you the results. Sign up today at OnStar.com. 
by Staples. That was easy. And by Dave and Buster's Power Combo, a full-sized entree plus $10 game card for a very special price. Well, he's made it inside the Dean Dome. He's got his middle seat, just the one he had on the flight. <laughs> G-Man made it in. You had so much fun at Baton Rouge, you wanted to stay a little longer. Well, not only did they wear the 78 retro jersey to Kentucky to <laughs> hammer it on me yesterday, but they canceled my flight out of there this morning. It's like the road to Mandalay coming up here, but I made it. Let's take a look at our SUV starting lineups for Maryland. Nick Tanner Medley has been the one constant for this team. He'll need to play big. And for the North Carolina Tar Heels, certainly this veteran team has been led by a freshman. And David Noel has been outstanding as the one upperclassman. And Rayshon Terry has really improved. They are really a veteran team now. This freshman group has been playing with the kind of maturity that you see from upperclassmen traditionally in this conference. Opening tap control to Maryland. Jones is stripped by Miller. And Maryland will control it underneath their own hoop. You know, Tim, when you talk to coaches about Mike Jones, they all refer to him as the X factor and, and what kind of offense he can provide on the floor. Terry with the rebound, but a Beckley gets in to knock it away. Out of bounds to North Carolina. Let's uh, take a look at the Acura game plan, and it comes from Dan rather than T-Man. <laughs> well, I think that uh, Mike would might, might agree with this, but for Maryland, they've got to make good decisions in the transition game that North Carolina is really going to force here. And for the Tar Heels, you've been talking about Terry and Noel. I think in a big game, your veterans really have to provide you with that base of support. I talked with Gary Williams before the game. He said they will quickly double hands throw. Someone else, and particularly someone on the perimeter, will have to beat them. Noel with the putback, and it's 2-0 North Carolina. But to me, he's really been rebounding at a high rate lately, nine over his last three games. Player control foul. Jones picks it up. Tim, and there's one of those decisions. Jones elects to take the ball all the way to the goal, stop and shoot the six-foot jump shot. Yeah, you can make a case that in terms of basketball acumen, through the course of this season, a lot of veteran teams have not played as well as North Carolina. They get it. This young group really does get it. Fraser for three. Right, you know, he needed to see a big basket not scoring against NC State, but had six assists in that ball game. Just in traffic. A Beckway, nice adjustment. And not picking up the charge against uh, Rayshon Terry by Kenny Beckway. That's the way he's expanded his ball game, his ability to face up and put it on the floor. Hands throw. <laughs> when he catches it down there, it's going in the goal. I, it's just amazing to me, Dan, that, that he hasn't worn down this year. I and mean, he almost seems to be getting stronger as the year goes along. So, I think, I think Tyler has the perfect surname. He does have great hands, bro. Right, I mean, you know what? I mean, Giss falls down right there, so you're automatically behind it. The defense can't recover in that situation. And, uh, you know, that's, that's an automatic two. A Beckway, no double team coming, and he takes advantage of it. He has all four for the Turks, two minutes gone. That's a very tough matchup inside for Newell, and uh, Beckway's got to take advantage of that and take him to the hole. And throw again, off the feed for Miller, he's rejected. I don't you think that's a pretty tough matchup for Beckway down on the other end, yeah. too, if Noel takes him outside? Hey, and it's, it's, it's who imposes their will on the other player. And right at the moment, it's the Beckway. Yep. Absolutely. 7-6, North Carolina. Gary Williams uh, a little upset with that call. Our officials tonight, Tom Lopes, Reggie Greenwood, Brian Dorsey. I might also add uh, I knew Tom Lopes was on my flight this morning. <laughs> Here comes the thump thump of the bus going over the G-Man. <laughs> Strawberry. Terry rips it down for North Carolina. Rayshon Terry, 10-6 North Carolina. 
My, I think the pace of this game has already gotten away from Maryland. Maryland cannot take the ball down and make one pass and shoot the thing. I think they've got to make the Tar Heels play defense for a few seconds. Count the basket. And that wasn't even close to going in. You've got to lay off that shot. But, you know, Dan, I agree. But it, and it's tough, too, when you're the second highest scoring team in the league and, and you want to get it. But you have to understand where you are, and it's tough to run. Here's this play. This shot has no chance of going in. And then Terry comes in and gives them a free two points. Gist is now checking hands, though. And there's the double from Strawberry and a block called against James Gist, the sophomore from Silver Spring, Maryland. Well, this is what you have to do. You have to be physical with hands and bump and move around him, change up how you play, front him, three-quarter him. And it is clear early in this game, as you alluded to, Tim, that Maryland is going to be committed to double-teaming him big. Tyler Hansbrough, not this time. Pulled down by Jones. Dan, a lot of times a guy gets double-teamed, he has the tendency to pull out and uh, want to shoot the jump shot. Nice defensive play by Fraser. Jones rejects him. Hansbrough up and over. Jones got the first one, but he wasn't blocking Hansbrough's shot. <laughs> uh, leading offensive rebounder in the ACC is Tyler Hansbrough, and not giving up on that break, that's what hustle does for you. Bowers has been getting a lot more playing time when Maryland goes large since McCray left. Hansbrough, all right, good defensive work by Jones there. On the reach, he'll get the personal, and Gary is hot. Giving Brian Dorsey a lot of lip right now. They're still filing in. Just in Raleigh. Twelve eight, North Carolina. You see Ray Sean Terry back on February 2nd at College Park. He scored seven points during an 11-2 run in the second half, leading the Tar Heels to a 77-62 victory. They trailed at halftime. Terry into the game with 20 points. That was about the time North Carolina was really becoming a more confident basketball team. Let's go over to Jen Hilden. She has more. Well, Tim Rayshon Terry, one of the most improved players in the conference this season. And one of the things that he says is he's playing more relaxed now and is letting the game come to him. Despite the fact that in the words of his teammate, David Noel, Rayshon gets ridden more than a cowboy riding his horse by coach Roy Williams. And Williams admitted, yeah, I push him harder than anybody else in this team. But Terry knows that it's because his coach believes him and knows that he can do a lot for his team when he's out there. So he's buying into it. Two things happen, fellas, I think, for North Carolina. One, the emergence of Rayshon Terry, and also the change in lineup with Marcus Ginyard and Wes Miller. And then, uh, and uh, G-Man, we were there for that Florida State game when that decision was made. And it's, it hasn't stopped paying dividends yet. Well, it was done for defensive purposes. Wes Miller is an energized player. He comes in. He's, he's graded out the best defensive player, the most for North Carolina this year. And again, turnover starting to become an issue. And, and three-point shooting is going to be an issue in this game like it was up in Maryland. Well, I think so. Just overall shooting, Mike. Uh, North Carolina shooting almost 56%. Maryland's got to do a better job making the opportunities tougher. Miller. On cue, Miller time, 17 to 8, North Carolina. You know, somehow, and he, and he just plays horse when Hansborough's down in the low box, but you can't come off him and double to him, and uh, Ledbetter and Jones got lost on that play. A back way, a bit further away from the basket. What a pass to Kaner Medley. A prior off the front rim. And that's the thing I like about Terry, too. He's really improves his rebounding. He gives him good numbers, He both he and Noel. bounds and a foul spotted against Terry Tim Brando alongside Mike Jeminski Dan Bonner and Jim Hilbert look at that that's a house full right there <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a killer for per diem Absolutely. <laughs> killer for per diem it's great to have you uh, here I'm glad you made it pal. Uh, it was uh, it was an arduous day but uh, <laughs> actually I kind of like waltzing at about five minutes before tip I could get used to this <laughs> By the way, the limo driver will stay, will, will stay for post game, okay? Out of bounds. <laughs> it will be controlled underneath 
the basket to the Terrapins. And you see uh, James Giss coming back into the game, replacing a Beckway. Well, nobody has scored other than a Beckway, Tim. He's got four field goals in the game. The North Carolina defense really seems to have the Maryland Terrapins in a hurry here. Strawberry. And that's where he's at his most dangerous. I mean, he's a big guard, and when he can get into the paint, he is tough to handle. Marcus Ginyard in the game for the first time. Noel on the wing. Air ball, and Ginyard there to retrieve it. That ball was uh, rejected. Nice work with all hands by Maryland. Ball was blocked. It'll be out of bounds to North Carolina. And Bowers is playing well. He's had uh, eight, eight points out his last time out. And here a nice defensive yep. presence inside. He's 7-1. He's long. And he keeps his arms up. And that takes up a lot of space. Green, not this time. Had to rush here with the shot clock winding down. Sterling Ledbetter is on the floor for Maryland. Number 12 operating at the point with Bowers. Painter Medley, Gist, and Strawberry. Another steal. That's been Merrill's problem all year. Ginyards protecting the basketball. Well, you just, against North Carolina, you have to be real careful when you're passing to the wing because they are doing a great job in knifing through. They're very opportunistic. Look at that. Ten points off turnovers, fellas. And a foul inside. Byron Sanders, a senior from Gulfport, Mississippi. Well, Dan, we'll take a look at this steal. The thing about it with North Carolina, it's nothing flashy. I mean, it's just point of attack at the ball, ball pressure, getting out in the wings. They don't extend their defense very much. They just don't let you run your offense. And that's the key, Mike. They don't let you run your offense. They deny the passes to the wing, and so they force you to do something else. And, and Maryland, they, they get in that situation, and it looks like when they're forced to do something else, that something else is dribbling the ball. And you know as well as anyone that it's a whole lot easier to guard dribblers than it is to try to guard cutter. Quentin Thomas comes into the game for North Carolina, replacing Bobby Fraser. So Byron Sanders now on the floor, along with Noel. Danny Green, who picked up that foul, and Marcus Ginyard. A five on the floor for North Carolina. Green has been a really strong complimentary player coming off the bench. That ball was off the foot of a Terrapin, and it'll belong to North Carolina. Tim, they've got Ginyard and Sanders and Green all coming off the bench, and they're just pieces to this puzzle that have fit perfectly. In the case of Thomas, you're talking about a returning player that lacked confidence early in the year. Sanders playing twice as many minutes. Uh, than perhaps he anticipated coming in for his senior year. Uh, and Quinn Thomas has really settled down lately, though, Tim. I, I think he's, he's playing with a lot more confidence. He's making fewer mistakes and better decisions. Ten yards for three. Up and over Strawberry. And that wasn't bad defense. That was just good offense. And, and maybe a shot you don't expect from Ten yards. Absolutely. <laughs> You're going give to give one of those guys that shot. Ten yards one of the fellas you picked. Difference in the game is shooting from downtown. Four out of six for North Carolina. Kaner Medley. You know, there's no double team for Giss. He's got to take that opportunity, look around, and make a strong play. I think he's got to get closer to the basket, Mike. Good defensive work that time by Ledbetter, slapping it away on the backdoor cut. Here's Hansbro coming back onto the floor along with uh, Miller and Rayshon Terry. Look at this, fellas. Amazing what he's done. Not only is he the freshman of the year, he's got to be. I mean, I, were it not for J.J. Redick and his explosion this year, I think he'd be a strong candidate for player of the year. Well, I, I would I, I think Sheldon Williams is the second best player in the league right now. But, yep. but Hansborough is a first-team All-ACC selection in my mind. Without, without question. I would say he may not be the best or the second best, but he's in the top three. <laughs> <laughs> right. Miller off the pick from Sanders. A Beckway clears for Maryland. Nice pass. Strawberry to Gist, and he blew the 
Chippy going reversal, threw it up too strong. I think, Dan, you hit on it. North Carolina forcing Maryland to play a few RPMs above where they really need to be on the road. North Carolina by 10. Welcome back to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The Tar Heels leading the Maryland Terrapins by 10 here in the first half. And it's time now to honor our GM OnStar student of the game. To do that, we actually go to an athlete from Virginia Tech. Coleman Collins is someone who has surpassed expectations, and he has done it under very trying circumstances. He's a Dean's List student. He'll graduate a year early, and he credits a lot of that to his father. He wrote in the school paper about his dad, saying his dad warned him about just scraping by and ending up empty-handed. Coleman said he really took his dad's words to heart, and that's so important, especially considering the last couple of weeks' very tragic circumstances. Coleman's dad, Jackson Collins, passed away after a battle with lung cancer, but certainly, Tim, he had a, a very big impact on his son. Absolutely, no question, Jen. James Giss got that slam, and now <laughs> steal. My goodness, Velcro hands from Giss. They're gonna have to throw higher to get over him. He giveth and he taketh away. A back way. Boy, Maryland missing some chippies. And there's a there's Carolina's in a drought, and uh, Maryland really not taking advantage of it. Oh, nice defensive play by Giss again. Now they've got they've got to score on these opportunities. Well, Maryland really has buckled down on the defensive end. They've gotten stops. Now they got to get conversion. See, the good big guys are catching it too far from the basket. You got to get down in the low post. So all you have to do is catch and make a move, not dribble before you make the move. Tyler Hansborough, fellas, doing a really nice job of recognizing the double teams and getting it away as soon as he possibly can. Thomas up top. And that's a skill that doesn't come easily to a lot of bigs. You, know, you, you look throughout the league and guys have twice as many turnovers as they do assists because they can't make decisions. Gainer Medley really being bothered by Rayshon Terry defensively. Hansbro facing up too strong. Now on the run out, another steal. Miller. Missed opportunities, Mike. You're absolutely right for Maryland. Thomas. Drops it down to Hansbrough. Good defensive work by Maryland, forcing the turnover. The Maryland still find that they're playing this great stretch of D, and they still find themselves in an eight-point hole. How many times do you notice that happening, though, fellas, when you're not necessarily known as a great defensive basketball team, and you concentrate so much on that end of the floor when you're scouting report, getting ready for a game, and then suddenly you forget you still have to put the ball in the hoop uh, when you've got the basketball? We see it so often in the college game. There's the look inside, and uh, clearly he is uh, number one on the scouting report, but Beckway getting the good hands in. And then this. I'm unfamiliar with that, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I saw that yeah. many times. <laughs> Actually, I didn't. The dunk was illegal when I played. <laughs> Thankfully. Rayshon Terry, by the way, got the foul his second. Travis Garrison just into the game. And... Uh, Ball ricocheted off Miller and Strawberry retrieved it. Now Sterling Ledbetter operating at the point. And that's a snapshot, really, of Garrison up big who will settle for the jump shot. Jones. Over the back against Bowers. You know, going back to uh, Jen Hilder's uh, point of a short time ago, Early in the season when Sean Dockery hit that shot, we were talking with um, Seth Greenberg, Dan, I recall, about all the issues he had with his team. Alan Callaway, one of his players, has a rare form of cancer. People lose sight sometimes of the issues coaches have to deal with off the floor during the course of a regular season. What a tip in. Mike Copeland. Where did that come from? Well, you know what? You keep the ball alive and sometimes good things happen. Strawberry a duck under. Again, missing from close range. Bowers. Oh, my. Unreal. It's as if there's a lid on top of that cylinder. You know, they've established themselves on the offensive glass, which is a good thing. But on the road, these are doozy points to let drop by. And there's Copeland with the left hand, no, no doubt. Wow, nobody blocked him out. Yep. 
North Carolina by 10. Maryland is one oh, what pass. 12. And the foul inside. It'll go against, North, against Maryland. Inside against Travis Garrison. You know, Mike, your point about Wes Miller is really a good one, and that is they put him in the game. Yeah, they put him in the starting line because of his defensive ability, but he does a lot of other things, too. What a great pass to Copeland, who draws the foul. And, you know, I, I talked about Hansborough being number one in the scouting report. Gary Williams is probably looking at Copeland going, they may not even come up in the conversation. I'm not, you know, no disrespect to him. Then here he is. He's going to have four points in this game and an impact. For the record, he's averaging one point a game. That was his first, first basket in ACC yeah. competition. Yeah. That pretty much illustrates it. Everyone for North Carolina getting involved. Way too strong by Green. Copeland tries to run it down, but Jones saves it for the Terrapins. Tanner Medley over Fraser. Garrison on the offensive glass. And he's fouled on a reach in by Bobby Fraser. First foul against the Tar Heel freshman from Blue Island, Illinois. It's been a tough year on Gary Williams. He did become the all-time winningest coach in College Park, passing the legendary left-hander. And of course, along with uh, his counterpart tonight and Mike Krzyzewski, the national championship coach in this league. There was so much more to the McRae than just his points and what he meant to this team and how difficult is it to lose a player of that stature midseason and recover from it. Well, I think it's the perfect illustration, Mike, is let's go, let's talk about the Clemson Tigers for a minute. Everything they did early in the season was built around Mays, and then they lost him, and they had to completely adjust. And that's when you lose a player of that stature. It's not only the guy you lost, but it's the guys who have to fit into that role, and then other guys have to change their roles, and that's very difficult to do after you've worked through a whole half of the season. Green. Hansbrough follows. Painter Medley pulls it down for the Terrapins. Now both teams have been pretty ineffective around the basket. Ledbetter rejected. Danny Green swats it away. He almost blocked that one to North Babylon, New York, where he's from. Number 21, North Carolina, leads by 11. Over seven and a half minutes remaining. Don't forget, next week, our final installment of ACC Sunday Night Hoops from Charlottesville, Maryland, and Virginia. And there, you'll see one of the top guards in the country, Sean Singletary, the diminutive sophomore, ranks high in the conference in scoring, assists, and steals. Really the reason the Cavaliers are your surprise team, G-Man, in the ACC this year. Well, and I, I think he merits first-team consideration. I'd vote for him right now. And he and J.R. Reynolds have done so much, Dan, and you've seen a lot of them. Well, Singletary particularly is so good in transition. Jones forces one up. Out of bounds to North Carolina. Mike, you were talking about Maryland and how well they're playing defensively but sort of squandering opportunity. You can see their field goal. But North Carolina is four for their last 17 shooting, and yet they've expanded their lead out to this 11-point lead that we have now. And both teams, the opportunities inside, they've combined for 16 offensive rebounds to this point, but we've seen very few second chance, second chance points as a result. Now, they may not be as efficient as they want to be, but there's nothing wrong with the intensity and the effort on the part of both of these teams. Hensbro with six on the shot clock. And he walks. Yeah, this is a problem that he has, and that sometimes he gets happy feet in the paint and trying to do too much and try to bully his way to a double team that time. Don't you think that's a product of how many times he gets fouled? He really has confidence in the fact that if he just gets the ball up to the basket, he's going to get fouled. Uh, and, 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 uh, and he's made a living at the line. <laughs> Absolutely. He's averaging the most attempts in the league and, and, and a very good free throw shooter for a big. Tanner Medley, that's an offensive foul. Well, Tanner Medley, they, they, can't, they can't afford to suffer through an 0 for 5 shooting night on, on him. And then he has got to score and contribute. 
in the games without McCray, he has been a major factor offensively when they've gotten wins. And then you, you talk about pulling up and shooting that little floater. And see, that's, that's what Maryland is really making a big effort, I think, to attack, attack, attack. But that's one of those decisions where the guys are under the basket, pull up. Nick Kaner medley shoots that little six, seven foot shot as well as anybody in this league. And again, to go back, fellas, on the importance of this game, from a Maryland perspective, Nick Kaner medley really the, the last man standing from a freshman class that was expected to take Maryland to, to the same kind of heights that they experienced early in this new century. And he's really the only guy remaining. He's, he's done a marvelous job. I think he's been a wonderful college player. But he just has not had the kind of support from his friends. And in many cases, there have been issues off the court that have led to some of those other veterans not being with this team right now. That was a good shot. He just didn't finish it. In traffic, hands roll. Count it, and the foul. You know, it's a, assault and battery inside, and he still finishes and could get a three-point play. I just... I marvel at his strength. He's got great hands, and look at that concentration. Well, another off, well, another thing he has, watch this pass. The moment that he's open inside, he gets the ball. Lots of times, if you're just a split second late, that defensive guy is able to establish better position. But he gets open, and bang, the ball is there. And that was a great pass. And feed, feeding the post is almost a lost art. It really is something that you have to work at. And, and the key thing, too, or when he's open and passing away from the defense, the Tar Heels have doubled up Maryland, 28 to 14. Nice play by Terry, into the passing lane. Ginyard sets it up. What a pass from Fraser to Hansdorf. He threaded it right into the paint. Well, that's just what I was talking about. He's open, bang, the ball is there. You know, Dan, and, and against a player like this, you've got to you've got to switch. I mean, that guy's just laying on his back. He's too good to do that. You've got a three-quarter or front or chain. You know, do something. And, here, and then the other thing, you've got to get some ball pressure. I mean, literally, it's a great, he can pick apart that pass. And there's no there's nobody in Frazier's face. Transition situation. They've got back. There was three guys around, but nobody really guards. But there's three guys around Anthro. Then uh, somebody's open, and it was Frazier. And this is what you're talking about, Mike. You know, with how many times he gets to the line? That that's that's almost you know, that's almost NBA level. You know, to get the with good bigs inside, and and it's you can really augment your scoring average when you're shooting 75 percent and taking nine free throws you get a couple layups here and there and then you're you're off 16 points well see i don't understand how he can go to the line that many times mike doesn't duke get all the calls <laughs> well see there's the difference he gets all of north carolina calls. <laughs> see the dodge turnover story the tar heels making good use of those turnovers now, here's a number for you then that was his 36th three-point play opportunity wow this year that's you, you talk about the wow factor that's but, that's got it he and jared dudley from boston college are the two best guys in the league at the old-fashioned three-point play in traffic jones gets it to fall and that ended a long drought for maryland jones. see they went they went eight minutes without a field goal and for Maryland, they just don't have the kind of perimeter firepower that enables you to come back from this far down in the road. Fraser, draining a tray, especially when the siege guns are firing on the other end of the floor. You know, early in the season, Mike, when I saw North Carolina, I thought one of their deficiencies would be inability to shoot from the perimeter. This goes to show you how much I know about them. Another great pass. And a foul against Noel as Strawberry got in position to take the player control foul from David Noel. And here again, I'm getting the sense in the last minute or two that the pace of the game is getting away from Maryland. And uh, here's the, the, the look up ahead. It's a very right-handed team, and that's a, just a great job stepping in by Strawberry. He saves two points by himself. Well, he actually turns it on at the end because Noel had those other two guys beat. Jones off the feed from Nick Kaner medley Four in the game for Mike Jones. They're going to need a heroic performance by both he and Nick Kaner medley in the second half 
I think they'll take two points from him instead of three. Yep. You know, if, you're, if you're North Carolina, I think you'd rather see Mike Jones working in the paint than along the three-point line. Peter Medley drives and delivers. But that is a tough, tough shot right there. His first basket. Nice double team by Maryland. Frazier turns it over. Hansbro deflects it out of bounds. Senior from Portland, and look at that move. A beautiful runner in the lane. Hi again, everybody. Mike Goldberg in our Atlanta College basketball studios coming up on the Lowe's Halftime Show. A big, huge showdown in the big, huge East and a key game in the SEC. All that plus Big Ten and Pac-10 scores and highlights, so stay tuned. Right now, back out to Tim Brando, beautiful Dean E. Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. All right, Mike, and uh, indeed some very big games, including that... Uh, Alabama, Florida game that you'll be documenting. How about the play of Tyler Hansbrough? Well, we see the catch inside and the finish gets falling down and the play does such a great job of shaping up. And then three-point play, the old fashioned right, Dan, he's got, he's only four of 10 from the field, but saving himself at the line where he's perfect, four for four. Jones running that curl beautifully. His last two buckets have come off that play. This time it's Strawberry that finds it. They needed a second score to emerge in this game, and uh, somebody finally helping out a Beckway. Well, Mike, they finally gotten to the point where they set their offense a couple of times. Genyard over Jones. And the question, gentlemen, will probably become in the second half, if Maryland can make a run offensively, will their defense sustain itself? In the past, that's been a problem for the Terrapins. Thomas a pull up. First good, bucket for Quentin Thomas. Good recognition by Thomas. And again, it's uh, it, it seen that Strawberry has stepped in and taken charges in this game. So he pulls up with the little floater. Look at that. The bench points all with North Carolina. A shutout. Jones is fouled by Ginyard. You know, normally in that flex offense, Dan, they've got a big down in the low box, but they've been taking advantage of Mike Jones down there, and he's been doing a nice job. They've been, like Boston College, they've been running it a little bit tighter, I think. And Mike Jones, you're, we're talking about his value in terms of scoring, and Mike, I really think that Jones, his skill set, if you will, basically involves around scoring. If he only scores two points, Maryland's really in trouble, but he's picked it up here over the last couple of possessions, and I agree with you. Right, Running that set that? offense and getting him off that little cut inside has been very successful. And you see the numbers way up. Uh, he's really taken a load of the scoring that McCray brought to the floor. They relied on him to do that, and then at that point, Gary Gary Williams gave right in the green light. Hey, this is your skill, I and mean, you got to go out there and do at least that for us, as you said. Genyard knocked away. Jen Hildreth has more on... Mike Jones and his emergence. Jim? Yeah, Tim, you guys were talking about him, and you know, he has a nickname, Mike the Trigger Jones, because the guy can shoot. Everybody knows that. When I talked to Gary Williams today, he said he can be as good as he wants to be. He just has to want to go out there and work at the other parts of his game. It's interesting. If, if you listen to Gary Williams on game day, and I, I talked to him prior to tonight's game, he really understands the circumstances this club finds itself in knows it's really about defensive effort in many cases. He's got to get some of these guys to play for 40 minutes on that end of the floor. Well, that was that last play. It was a fourth shot by Kaner Medley. And fortunately for Maryland, they didn't have to pay for it with the turnover on the other end. Gary Williams can get him to play with intensity. Gary Williams can get him in the right places. But Gary Williams cannot get them to make good decisions. And Mike, that's a, that last play is a perfect example of what you're talking about. Nick Tainer Medley, as good a player as he is, cannot take the ball into three guys and shoot it unless the defense has moved around a little bit. And, and you know, and Dan Gary's talked about it, especially on the road. It really surfaces on the road. They're pretty comfortable at home, but they, they, the light hasn't gone on away from home. And believe me, the tournament selection committee is looking at that. They're also looking at what Maryland can do without Chris McCray. And Hansbrough gets the jam. Well, you know, they're playing pretty well defensively. They have really turned it up. They've got great intensity. They just cannot get the ball to go in the basket. 
Jones again. See, that's a fadeaway shot. He comes off that screen, but he's shooting a fadeaway from the top of the key. I mean, you're right. I mean, you know, you hold North Carolina 38 points here and a half at home. That's not bad. You can live with that. Would have counted had it fallen. The foul will go against Strawberry. Or check that. It may be Sterling Ledbetter. Well, so many times you talk about being opportunistic, and that's just quick hands inside. Danny Green and then Hansborough hustling around. There's Tyler's father, Gene, here enjoying the action. Carolina swag. Absolutely. On Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of smiles. Fellas, this team without, and you know, I think there's always an over-under every time North Carolina is playing. When will the announcers say they lost their first seven players in 91% of their offense? I think everyone said that in every North Carolina game. But the truth of the matter is, this is now a club that really looks like it can be a quality defending national champion going into the NCAA. And, and, and early on, there were people who were doubting whether they'd even have that opportunity in the field of 65. Well, they lost a lot of guys, but you know, they get some pretty good play. Oh, absolutely. But the facts are, and I've told a number of fans this, the reason the announcers always mention they lost their first seven players and 91% of their offense is because it's never happened. Shot clock down to five. That's a walk by Ledbetter. Actually, he palmed the ball, carrying the basketball, and it goes back over to North Carolina. Look at that. Well, there is. I mean, and, and Roy talked about it. I mean, it was a great moment for him to win a national championship. And then he really enjoyed draft day. I mean, to see all those kids get selected in the lottery, that's quite an accomplishment. And then I, I think really the, end, the joy that he's gotten in coaching this particular group. Well, I think the opportunity to work with kids who are very good players, but who are really there and they they understand that, you know, you're the coach of the defending national champions. It'd be good if they had, uh, you know, Sean May here. But it, the, the whole deal is Roy Williams has a great deal of credibility with these kids. They enjoy playing for him. They play hard. And they're learning every day. And he's really now building his program. Absolutely. With his players. Shot clock at 10. Green gives it back to Fraser. Now he's got a launch. Brown comes away with a rebound. Harris Brown, the junior from Chicago. Out to Keener Medley. A Beck William Bowers. And Tom Lope spots the foul over the back against Will Bowers. And that's, th th that is, that's sort of the first half in capsule right here. Gary Williams' uh, expression on his face says it all, that three seconds left to get an over-the-back foul. A chance to, you know, give him two free points going in, and, uh, you know, instead of 15, maybe stretches out to 17 points. Gary is commenting upon that to uh, Tom Lopes. <laughs> but really, uh, for the most part, yeah, I felt like the, the referees have stayed out of the way in this game. It's been, it's been pretty up and down. They let him play inside. There's been a lot of contact on the offensive glass. I don't think either coaches are, are happy about it, but I think it's, it's equitable on either end. I think you might get a debate about that from the fella <laughs> over here on the right side of the scores table. <laughs> One thing about he may be upset for a moment, but he moves on to the next item. He may get upset about that too, but he does move on in a manner that a lot of people don't realize. You see the animation on the sidelines. Brown at the buzzer. Just an outstanding first half for North Carolina. They had some droughts offensively, but with their defense being a constant, they made sure Maryland didn't have a field goal over an eight-minute stretch. And their lead ballooned to 17, and Jim Hildreth is standing by with Roy Williams. Coach Williams, you talked to us before the game about wanting to rebound, get down on the floor, play good defense. So far, you like what you see? Well, I like some of it. I think we've turned it over at one point. We've turned it over three out of four possessions. We've got to get shots, and we've got to do a better job against Mike Jones in the mid-range game because he's so good. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you very much. Tim? All right, Jim, thank you. Now let's join Mike Goldberg, Perry Clark, and Larry Conley for the Lowe's Halftime Show. Mike? 
Tim Brandel, thank you very much. Welcome to our ACC Sunday Night Hoop studios in Atlanta. Guys, just what we expected from North Carolina from the start. I mean, they had so much returning. I mean, they're just outstanding. Well, Mike. I was being sarcastic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I caught you off guard, though. All right. Hold well, no, that. I predicted that they would yes, be good, you, uh, so I was ready to jump on that. Right, he's going to throw a shoulder out right now, <laughs> patting himself on the back. I'll tell you who should be patting himself on the back. It's Psycho T. Tyler Hansbro. He had a monstrous first half with 14 points. Perry and Larry will break it down when we return. Welcome back to the Lowe's Halftime Show alongside Perry Clark and Larry Conley, Mike Goldberg. 26% shooting in the first half for Maryland. And Larry, in a do-or-die situation, did you expect more from the Terrapins? Well, Mike, I did, but it was also a basketball team that went through a couple of droughts in that first half. And you can't do that against this North Carolina team. You've got to consistently score when you get your opportunities. Maryland couldn't do that. So long droughts really hurt them. But it's not as much as the drought that Tim Brando is getting tonight because he's got two analysts. He can't talk. So they both enjoy that. Uh, you know what? I have two analysts as well. And Perry, now you may speak, please. Thank you, Michael. Uh, you know, for North Carolina, their break has been lethal all year. And Roy has done a great job with these young kids in teaching them how to run and how to take advantage of that. They've done that tonight. And for Maryland, it's been the inconsistent that has been consistent, they've not been able to make shots, Mike, and that has been the thing that's really pl plagued them all year. And yes, Perry Clark, a North Carolina believer, he also said watch GW this year. You should watch Pac-10 basketball when we're concluded tonight because it's been 46 years since Cal's won the Pac-10 title, 21 years since Washington has. Cal at Washington coming up later tonight. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Lowe's. Come in and see why it's easier than ever to make your dream home a reality. And nobody works harder to save you money every day. That's our promise. Lowe's, where improving home improvement never ends. And by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Roy Williams talked to Jen Hildreth about Mike Jones of Maryland. He 0 for 3 from three-point range in the first half. Maryland 0 of 6 from beyond the arc. They trail big back in a moment. Welcome back to the Lowe's Halftime Show, the rematch. Number two, Villanova at number three, UConn. Mike, there's not a tougher coach to beat the second time around than Jim Calhoun. And he had his Huskies ready to go today. They had four guys in double figures led by Denham Brown. And they shot 61% from the three. Denham Brown, a career high, 23 points in the victory. A good one between Alabama and the Florida Gators. Anytime you've got Ronald Steele handling the basketball, you're in pretty good shape. And Alabama had that today. He put in 19 points today, Mike. Gators, six losses by a total of 27 points. Alabama's won six straight at home. They knock off number 12, Florida, 82 to 77. Elsewhere on this Sunday, Michigan State loses at the Assembly Hall. Robert Vaden with a double-double, 21 points and 10 rebounds. And in the Pac-10, UCLA victorious at home over Oregon. The last Pac-10 title for UCLA, 97. 697. Don't forget, Pac-10 basketball coming your way after our presentation of ACC Sunday Night Hoops. It is Cal against number 17, Washington. Perry, Larry, and I all agree, Maryland better get on the horse and get on it quickly if they're going to make a basketball game out of this one in Chapel Hill. Second half coming on the backside. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge and by SUV.com. At halftime here at the Dean Dome, North Carolina, 41 to 24, they lead Maryland. Along with the tall Virginian hey, minute, you know and the G-Man. You know, it's, all, it's only fitting that we're going to highlight number 50, Tyler Hansbro, in our highlights. You know why? Why is that? Because oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you keep talking about tomorrow being oh, the first man. anniversary of your 49th birthday. So we thought with the help of our mascot friend, 
and our cheerleaders here that we can see that it is your 50th birthday, I, sir. I'm a Pisces. Do you like me? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you still love me. Do you love me? <laughs> Only you. if you give us some cake. <laughs> you got it. Is this what you sell? I'm sitting next to Sally Fields here for goodness sake. <laughs> oh, let's get to the highlights, shall we? Please. Yes, please. While Mike Jones is doing some work inside, instead of the three-pointer curling and getting into the lane, those nice little screens. He needs to pick it up offensively, and then on the other end, Tyler Hansborough has been a man inside. The only double-figure scorer in this game with 14 points. 5'11", shooting opportunistic steal right here and finish. And as we take a look at our Dodge first half stats, Mike, you can see Maryland's field goal percentage, only 27%. They haven't made any three-point baskets, but look right here. The points off turnovers for North Carolina, 16 to 4 over Maryland. And also, Dan, a great contribution to the bench for North Carolina, 11 points to zero for Maryland. Jim Hildreth talked to Gary Williams a moment ago, Jim. Yeah, Jim, save me a piece of that cake, by the way, but yeah. yes, I did talk to Gary Williams. Defensively, we counted seven layups that we missed, so we need to finish our opportunities. Defensively, he said we're letting Tyler Hansborough catch the ball way too deep. We need to push him out farther in the paint and make him work harder for it. All right, Jim. Hey, Tim, you know, when we go to dinner tonight, we're going to tell him it's your birthday and get another cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, given the job you guys are doing, there's Terry. I bet when he pulls it down, the thought came to my mind, I might just eat the cake and let you guys have it. <laughs> but that quickly passed, didn't it? <laughs> Jones unable to knock it down. Hansbro retrieves it. Tim, in the first half, Maryland had 35 possessions, and on only 13 of them did they make three or more passes. So 22 times they shot the ball up with only one pass or no passes, and that is what I mean by playing a little too quickly. Look at that work by Hansbro. I think it's physical in there. Yes, picking it up. Uh, that's what you have to do, though, against him. You've got to fight and somehow root him out of position in the low block. If he catches the ball with two feet in the paint, it's over. It was a uh, double foul. Double foul. So the first for Hansbro. Uh, Roy Williams not at all happy with that call. Hansbro again in traffic. Oh, my, oh my goodness. goodness. You could not be serious. But again, Mike, I go back to the great, great entry pass. You know, it seems like when he's open, he catches the ball because they're throwing it to him. Well, and they're going to get laying on his back. Yeah, he's too good. He's too good to do that. You've got to front somehow and, and try to at least make it a tough pass. I know you risk giving up offensive rebounding and the, and the lob, but that's just too easy. Well, if you front him, you've got to have somebody play behind. But I, I think I agree with you, Mike. I think you've got to take that chance. Well, and also, Dan, I mean, just ball pressure on the passer. I, I think it's too easy for the people on the perimeter to get a look inside. Hist, again, a tough shot. And a poor decision, perhaps. Brazier, it's rejected. Nice work again defensively. Strawberry and a Betway getting back. Gainer Medley in traffic. That's a bit more like it for Maryland. That's a great cut, a great pass, and then he follows you, just cuts to the basket. Normally, when a guy gives up the ball, his defender relaxes a little bit and stands up, and Kaner Medley took advantage of that. Terry. Fraser gets the rebound. Rayshon one more time. Out of bounds to North Carolina. Dan, are you, are you surprised over the course of the season that, that both Terry and Noel have become legitimate stars and go-to guys in this offense? Well, I'm, what I'm surprised about is the fact that they, their, their development has come along so, I mean, it's been very incremental. That uh, They obviously were very good players. They didn't get very minutes, many minutes, so we didn't know how good they were, but now they've been able to show it. And a lot of times guys get so anxious in that situation but they have not been. They've let the games come to them. Steal by Strawberry. Got Kaner Medley down there with him. Abekwe dumping it down. Nice idea. Hansbro reaches in. Kaner Medley was taking it. And uh, the foul spotted. It goes against Bobby Fraser. Roy Williams was talking about Rayshon Terry. More than a complimentary player right now. You know, Rayshon is extremely gifted, and 
I think with each and every week, he's getting better about learning how to play the game of basketball and how to do it in a team situation with four other guys. Uh, he can shoot the ball from, with range. He can take the ball to the basket. He jumps so well. Uh, he is becoming more and more a complete player. And, uh, you know, who knows down the line he could be a guy that's completely pushed out of that complimentary role into a starring role. That may already be happening. Well, that's, you know, my point, Dan, was we saw flashes of it last year, but he's playing with, with seven great players. And a lot of times the guy doesn't make that transition. All of a sudden now you're up the scouting report and you're, you're the focal point of the defense. And he really has responded well. But I think that Roy Williams answered your question much better than I did, Mike. Rayshon Terry and David Noel, I would make this argument too. They're extremely gifted. Hands bro, right into Bowers and Gist. Will Bowers will get the foul. That's number four. Well, it's, you know, it's like some people think that the, the you know the, the Roy took players out of Woolen and Jim and you know, kind of crafted his team. But these, these guys, they got McDonald's All Americans. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like that he put out a student tryout. <laughs> Well, what's one of those movies, The Replacements or something, where he just recruited a bunch of guys off the street? Look at this, fellas, the single season scoring improvement. Yeah. Terry and Noel right, right there. Look at David Noel, and that's, you know, that's you talk about having to make up 91% of your offense when you have two guys improve that much. It, it certainly helps a lot, and then you have the uh, the influx of 18 points per by that man right there, Hansborough. Hansborough, did he get the timeout? He did. Gad loves it. Gene Hansborough giving it up for his son. Tim and a huge smile on the face of Roy Williams as that play was being made. We've been talking a great deal about the freshman of influence North Carolina leading and guys this really does illustrate it impact players throughout the uh, years in this conference those two of them certainly benefited Bobby Kremens right off the bat there Kenny Anderson and Mark Price and then Joe Smith and his two years at Maryland that Tyler Hansborough right in that group interesting interestingly Kenny Anderson and Mark Price both led the ACC in scoring their freshman years but Hansborough he's got no shot at that that fella down the road scores a lot of points yes that he does. Yeah, he probably has to go back a long way to see a gap between one and two like you're seeing this year in the, in the scoring race. Uh, we should uh, congratulate J.J. Redding for becoming the ACC's all-time leading scorer. He might be a little concerned at the Duke. He looks like he might be wearing down over the last couple of games. You know, Mike, I thought that, and, and what it's going to be funny, but I had the Boston College NC State game yesterday, and I thought that guys on both teams, if Noel hits that one, looked like, you know, they were wearing down. It wasn't just the yeah. game. It was over the course of the season, and I think that's really a concern with, with Reddick. He, he's in great shape, but he's played so many minutes. Now, these are the dog days of the regular season. They, they, they can see in their sights the conference tournaments are less than a couple of weeks away. And there you see the uh, numbers on J.J. passing Dickie Hemrick. Yeah, incredible. Half a century old record for Dickie Hemrick. And, three in, you know. and, and one of the fun things about J.J. Redick beating that record is that here we are talking about Dickie Hemrick. And we're taking yeah. the fans of the current ACC, particularly the new and expanded ACC, and we're connecting them with the roots of the ACC. Yep. Dan, do you know how much run G-Man got when J.J. passed him? <laughs> he got a lot of run. Are you kidding? 46-31, North Carolina. Well, Tim, he passed me in his first couple of games, and I didn't get any run. I got a lot of run, all of it bad. <laughs> Ball's on the deck. It will belong to North Carolina. Travis Garrison, unaware that the ball was actually inbounds briefly. Now, Gary, Williams, up. Gary Williams, Tim, asking for an over-the-back ball. And each of these teams has been extremely aggressive on the boards. That's an illegal pick well, against at, Hansbro. At, 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 the, at the half, Dan, combined 19 offensive rebounds. For That's a very high number on this level. Actually, they clipped. But the point you made, Mike, is a good one. Not a whole lot of yeah. second-chance scoring based on that number. I really think that Maryland's got to do something to, to, to sort of take control of this game, at least for a little while. They actually tagged Terry with that illegal pick rather than Hansbro. Garrison with a gift to after North Carolina juggled it. Even that, those were opportunities in the first half that uh, Maryland was not converting. Four minutes gone here in the second half. They need to do something to change the tone of this game. 
A reach-in foul against D.J. Strawberry. North Carolina leads it by 13 here at the Dean Dome on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. 46 to 33 North Carolina. We were talking about J.J. Reddick's exploits and we asked him about what it felt like passing all those great players. The past few weeks have gone by and I've um, passed some great players on the you know, all-time scoring list in the ACC. I've actually been amazed at some of the names I've passed. Guys like Phil Ford and, and David Thompson. But, you know, one name really caught my eye. It was Mike Jaminski and I was thinking, you know, how did he get on that list? Who was he playing against? Was he playing against six three post players? Because I you know I know he couldn't score. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Dan, you obviously something's gonna happen to you in this broadcast. Nothing's but... gonna happen to me. <laughs> Nothing can happen to me. Somebody well, you, somebody you know, have a birthday, well, please. As, as I told as I told JJ, I said, I played with two other two thousand point scorers. You're just hogging the ball. I mean, it's just, it's just flat out nobody else gets any shots on that team. <laughs> See, they didn't know I was coming, Mike. They don't have—they didn't have time to prepare anything. <laughs> stay tuned for. Stay tuned after the show. We we may have time for Mike Jaminski. This is your life. Ralph Edwards coming back for us. Fraser not there. And that's damn. They need to have more defensive stands like that. You're talking about taking control and, and setting a tone in the game. North Carolina really eliminating those cuts. North Carolina's done a great job playing in the passing lanes, taking away what Maryland wants to do, forcing Maryland to make plays off the dribble. Now Jones does get free. Misses another one from in close. And Garrison lost it to David Noel. It'll be Maryland basketball. What was the number Gary Williams gave Jen at halftime? They figured they missed seven layups. Seven layups. Well, I think that would classify. You add that in. And you might be able to suffer that at home, but you can't do it on the road. And the turnover, the end result. Terry, that ball was deflected by Garrison. Terry, baseline. Kaner Medley gets in the way. Garrison, nice finger roll. It doesn't go. Wow. How many more? Gary Williams with his hand, both hands on his head, in disbelief. You know, you talked about it. The coaches can get you shots. Players have to make shots. Well, I mean, Maryland had the opportunity. They, they missed two point-blank range shots. Could have gotten this game down under double figures. Fans trying to pump up the Tar Heels defensively here, sensing a Maryland run. Gist. Oh, the iron finally at long last kind. An 11 3 start now for the Turks. And that's the, even with those misses that we've seen. That's an offensive foul. And through this stretch, the ball has not gone inside to Tyler Hansborough. He has not gotten touches. And uh, Maryland able to contain this team Terry. offensively. Sean Terry just picked up his fourth foul. There's a look inside, and you just you've got to become you've got to become stationary and let the offensive player use you. Rob, but you can't become stationary after you take three steps and knock the offensive <laughs> player down. That's too late. That's uh, twice Terry's been tagged with illegal picks. Right, well, John Fox might have liked that play from his <laughs> offensive line. Taylor Medley. That ball is out of bounds to the Terrapins. What great hustle by Strawberry! Just outstanding. Nick Kaner Medley. You know, I think he's beginning, beginning to get a little frustrated. He's not getting very good looks at the basket. And that time he came off the screen, didn't look like he got himself set and squared to the basket. You, know, you have to admire, you know, Gary's got to like the competitive, competitiveness of his team in this game. There's just a lot of sweat and nothing to show for it. Well, if there is no sense of urgency now, there never will be for Maryland. They absolutely have to have an impressive victory if they want to get into the NCAA tournament. Noel, oh my! And he bowers that time. When you kick it out, he burned his dribble. He was buried along the baseline. And when you kick it out against North Carolina, that's the first pass to a fast break. Fans are on their feet here in Chapel Hill. Another loose ball. The inability to protect the basketball. Both teams, a little return to Cinder for Maryland. 
Strawberry with Keener Nenley. That's a big sequence. That's a four-point swing for the Terrapins. Yeah, but all that effort, Tim, and it's still an 11-point game. Absolutely. Really uphill for Maryland. Miller on the floor along with Green, Byron Sanders, David Noel, and Clinton Thomas. The other thing Maryland's taken out, they've taken Hansborough out, and not many three-point shots in the second half so far for North Carolina. Noel, beautiful pass from Quentin Thomas. Maryland counters with Ledbetter, Abekway, Strawberry, Painter, Medley, and Bowers. Painter, Medley rejected by Green. Nice spin move on the baseline. He stays with it. And uh, induces the foul from Danny Green. Just another Staples easy play of the game, and it comes in transition, fellas. Yes, again, see, when you kick it out like that, you are inviting a steal, and there's no way you can get any kind of defensive transition. Noel just has a nice run to the front of the rim. And I, you know, Dan, we talked about the increase in numbers, but he really has made this team his own. His leadership has been outstanding this year. The thing about Noel, as Kaner Medley makes the first one, Mike, is I get the impression that Noel has never once this year tried to do more than he's capable of doing. He's just done what he's capable of doing very, very well. Kaner Medley converts on both. It's an 11-point lead for North Carolina. Tim Brando, Mike Jaminski, Dan Bonner, Jim Hildreth. And FC Sunday Night Hoops. And a cast of thousands. Yeah. <laughs> Sanders, he gets the bump. Foul inside. Ledbetter picks up his second. That's a risk you take when you put some pressure on in the backcourt that you're going to get some mismatches in transition. Just a nice job by Sanders, Mike, to run to the block, and he's got Ledbetter on him. Well, Roy talked to him at the beginning of the year and said, you know, last year we, you know, you, you got lost in the rotation, but we need you to do things for us this year, especially on the hunt on the boards and defensively. David Noel has a dozen. The senior from Durham, North Carolina. 52-39. Maryland really playing for their postseason lives. With every game they play, they're certainly squarely on the bubble. North Carolina looking to improve their seating and cement themselves as the second best team in the ACC. And for Roy Williams, that's more than perhaps he thought he'd get this year. 52 to 39, North Carolina by 13 after our game. Pac-10 basketball takes center court. The Golden Bears against the really hot Washington Huskies. Our coverage begins after our game right here on FSN. Nick Kaner Medley, a real factor in uh, tonight's game, and uh, they need more from him inside. Wow, but it's been a struggle. You can see the shot by shot with Nick Kaner Medley, only 3 of 13. I think North Carolina has done a really good job defending Nick Kaner Medley, making it very difficult for him to get open looks. And a guy like Terry is long and can bother him. And, and I thought in that last sequence, Dan, that we talked about people losing their legs, that it looked like Kaner Medley really struggling in those last three misses. Green. Sanders follows. Mike, one of the problems that Maryland has had in their recent run of tough luck, losing six of eight games, is they just don't have that many offensive weapons. And if you can take Nick Kaner Medley out of the picture, you can make it very difficult for Maryland to score. And that's what North Carolina has been able to do tonight. He's begging for some calls, and he's not getting them. Clinton Thomas. And really, again, case in point to their bench. Only two points off the bench tonight, and and you know that Carolina's gotten a lift from Copeland, from San, you know unexpected uh, sources of points coming up and doing a good job. Well, you know Hansbrough was outstanding in the first half. Maryland adjusts. Hansbrough hasn't handled the ball, but Noel scores eight points 
in the second half. So I get the impression that even though we talk about this young North Carolina team, that they just have a lot of weapons. You plug a hole in the dike somewhere, the water starts spurting out someplace else. You know, and I think I like about Hansborough, Timmy, he doesn't force the action. You know, when we talk about guys who hunt their points, and if he's getting double teamed, he's happy to kick it out and let other people do the work. And again, we find that Maryland can't sustain their defense long enough if their offense isn't scoring enough. And that that's that, that sort of uh, robbing from Peter to pay Paul process has been an issue for Gary's team all year. Tim, you play really tough on the defensive end, and you do it time and time again. And Gary Williams' troops have done that tonight. And then you go down on the other end, and you can't score. Yeah. And you start to lose some confidence in yourself. When you score, you play much more confidently, and your defense improves. I absolutely believe they've played their best defensive game that we've seen all year, fellas, and yet they're still down by a large margin. Well, North Carolina has only shot the ball 35% from the field, Tim. Maryland, on the other hand, they check in at 28, so. A Beckway is fouled by Green. You know, really, it has been, to me, an amazing dynamic, and I, and I think, and I think the record bears it out, that this North Carolina team, in many ways, plays better on the road than they do at home. Yeah. Well, Mike, they're 3-3 three and three at home yep. and 6-1 and one on the it, road in that, the league. Don't you think that could be a byproduct of, of being young and getting caught up in the expectations, maybe the new expectations that these well, fans in Chapel Hill have? Well, that's all. I think, yeah, I think they almost get more caught up in being North Carolina yeah, here. Right. Then they, they play a little more freely, a little looser on the road and then... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, get away from from this, where the, the banners are hanging up, and, uh, and they'll grow into that, obviously. But it's just, it's uncharacteristic of a Roy Williams team to have those type of losses at home. Well, of course, they played Boston College and Duke at home, and they're pretty tough team. They're okay. Yeah. yeah they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas put it in. I actually, after the Duke North Carolina game, I was here for it. Rather than having a hangover after that loss, I thought they got positive carryover after that game, that their confidence grew even more because of the way they played that game and made a run to get a lead late after being down 17. There's a blocking foul against Green of North Carolina. And frankly, when you play those big games, and Roy's played in a lot of them as a coach, he knows you can get something out of it. Well, it is different because everybody else makes it different. As coaches, uh, we try to say it's one game, and the players understand it's one game, but nobody else will allow it to be the same. And so mentally and physically, there's more preparation. Uh, you've got more involved in the game, and after the game, uh, the hangover from it is more uh, win or lose. Well, and, Dan, the thing that's unique for the freshmen at Duke and Carolina, all freshmen go through first through the league but nobody else goes through the first of playing in that game yes. except Duke and Caroline. And that's just one thing that, that you know, they, and again, Hansborough was talking about beforehand about you hear about it and you hear about it and then you actually do it. It's, an, it's, it's different. Miller! You know, Mike, this is another guy, Miller, who has improved throughout the course of the season. It looks to me like he doesn't need anywhere near as much time to get him shot off as he did at the start of the season. He is not just a catch-and-shoot guy. And, and I don't know how he gets lost. I mean, here's a guy, you know he's going to take three-point shots. Yeah. you got to find him out on the floor. A Beckway gets fouled underneath Noel, picking it up for North but, Carolina. But case in point, the, the NC State game. You know, and there's, the, you know, they're, they're, they're in this are lock in the term. They're playing for seeding right now. And there you see the road record, 7-2, and two, which is outstanding. By the way, I think they have a chance if they can continue this role, this stretch, the rest of the way and have a decent uh, uh, ACC tournament. They could get as high as maybe a, a four or a three seed. You know who they remind me of on the national scene, Tim? Uh, a team with a very solid coach, a team with a lot of young players, a team that started sort of slowly. And it reminds me, you know, sort of a Roy Williams connection here, Kansas. Yeah. Kansas is uh, is a team that started very slowly. Now, I know they got beat yesterday at Texas, but they're a very young team, and they have very good players, and they have really, really been playing well. And I would put Kansas and North Carolina in the same classification that you're talking about. It's still, oh, what a catch and pass. Oh, you my. You got to be kidding. Noel, Merry Christmas to Hansborough. How good is that? 
I, I just marvel at his ability to catch. I mean, that's not, a, that's not an easy catch. In traffic, going toward the basket, he's back away, and that's just a great feed by David Noel. Dude, you can see it in his eyes as he's going down there. He's concentrating totally on the ball, not distracted by the Maryland guy. I think it was a Beckway in front of him. But I, I think Kansas and North Carolina really strike me as being similar in terms of young guys who are now coming on. Yeah, that's a good call, and then people were burying them early. A Beckway misses the dunk, upset with himself, but was fouled. And, and also similar, too, and Dan, and, it, and Bill Self building his program with his guys, you know, and uh, you know, we're talking about Hansbrough being one of the best freshmen in the country, but Kansas and Bill Self, they have Brandon Rush, who's played so well for them, but they got this, this fellow Julian Wright. Yeah. <laughs> He's unbelievable. And by the way, that blowout loss to Texas is more of, <laughs> that's more Texas being one of those uh, dominant teams when they get the inside play that they're accustomed to have. Well, and, you know, and I know Buckner was hurt early, but that was a team that had to do a lot of soul searching that blow out to Duke early in the yeah. year and then losing to Tennessee at home. They really have regrouped well. Uh, the win against Memphis at Memphis, I think, really helped Rick Barnes' team. That ball is knocked out of bounds by uh, Maryland. North Carolina will have it underneath their own hoop. 63-45, North Carolina with 8.50 remaining. We're in Chapel Hill, not far from Raleigh and Durham, North Carolina, the Triangle region, along Tobacco Road. Tim Brando, Mike Janinski, Dan Bonner, and Jim Hilbert. Noel, Ginyard to follow. Largest lead of the night for the Tar Heels. Three, three red jerseys standing around the front of the rim, and a guard goes in and gets an offensive rebound. It can't, it can't happen. Jones, a cutter. Well, I think I think Maryland, with all the energy that they have exerted, that their their fuel tank, the the, the indicator may be bouncing on E for them, Mike. And here's the what the jump shot, and uh, tough to see what's going on in the paint. But Ginyard was just the first one off the floor, and uh, all Maryland can do is take it out of the net. Well, North Carolina keeps putting guys in the game who make plays. Seen Gene Hansbro, the father of uh, Tyler, uh, in the building tonight here at the Dean Dome. Momentarily, we're going to have a chance to chat with Gene Hansbro. Jen, Jen Hilbert will do that when we come back. Time out. North Carolina leads by 20. North Carolina leads by 20. Tyler Hansbro, one of his many quality cuts to the basket and standing by now with our Jim Hildreth is a very proud papa. You bet he's proud Tim and I've got to ask you Gene, you must be enjoying this season are you? Oh this is a dream you know this it's unbelievable I'm so proud of Tyler and, and this whole situation at, Ter at Carolina is so great. Well, well where does he get his toughness let me ask you that first because I, I mean he, you just watch him out there and you can't believe it. Well he's been playing against older kids almost all his life but a lot of times on Sunday afternoons, the roughest games he were, was ever in were with his brothers out in the backyard playing 21. And if you weren't bleeding, there was no foul. <laughs> I can see why he handles it so well. Thank you. Strawberry oh, knocks down the Strawberry. tray in a quick timeout taken by Maryland. You know, it's been said big people need to have a nasty streak. And maybe when you're playing with your big brothers in a, in a nasty game in the uh, front yard, you develop that, Mike. Well, and, you know, the, the shame of the, of the year is that he didn't have a foil inside to play with. And that's what I think people were concerned with, that there was no other big to, to uh, play alongside. And it's amazing to me that he's been able to do it virtually by himself. Well, the interesting thing about him, playing inside, he's got, uh, he's got David Noel, who's such a hard matchup. Next week, we'll be uh, in Dan the Man's country, Charlottesville, Virginia, Maryland, against Virginia. Oh, Look at on. that. Very nice. It's throwback week, Dan. You got to deal with it. Well, I tell you what, you can have throwback week. That's perfectly all right. As long as you make the guys in this day and age wear those shorts. You keep having, you know, you guys have throwback days, but nobody ever wears the shorts. All right, Jen Hildreth, you're next. <laughs> 
See, now that is not going to be an easy game for Maryland because that's Virginia's final game in University Hall. It's their final home game of the season, and there has been so much buildup already yep. in Charlottesville about that particular game that Maryland's really going into a hornet's nest. Yes, we will be at uh, University Hall, the house that uh, Bonner built. Uh, and let's take a look at the tournament resume for Maryland, who, by the way, it could come down, really, to that last game. It could come down to that last game against... Virginia for Maryland if they want to, they need to get to eight and eight somehow. Well, if they don't come back in this one, it's going to be it's going to be six and eight, and then they've got Miami, yeah. uh, a tough home game there, and then as you said, and a very tough road game there. They are really going to have a lot of work to do, I think, in the ACC tournament. Well, I think so too. And the problem for Maryland, I think Gary Williams guys, after 13 games last year, they were seven and six in the conference, and they had those two wins over Duke. This year, they're six and seven, and they really don't have those marquee wins. They did play a very tough schedule. The only one, maybe Boston College early. That was in December uh, to, to start. That was their first ACC game. But after that, uh, you're, you're right, nothing to hang the hat on. Well, Tim, you get a lot of credit for playing a tough schedule if you win the games. Terry with only two on the shot clock. And that's just a killer. Come out of a timeout, one shot, you're down 20. Abekway really wants to get it. Hansbrough's got him pretty far from the basket. But a great move, and yet he doesn't finish. That was a very smooth move. That typifies the entire night. Hansbrough with power. Oh, 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 Tyler, you are so special. And that's facing the basket. Good heavens. And I, I still don't think he's got he's, he can still really refine his low box game oh, no there's, 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 there's a long way to go when he when he develops drop steps and jump hooks Bunk it inside and i think another thing that hansborough does sometimes is that he's very very quick when he catches the ball his first thought is to shoot it and I think sometimes when guys surround him, if he could pass it out a little bit more quickly, see right here, he's got four guys around him. There's four red shirts there. Now, this is a great play, but I think as he refines his game, Mike, he catches the ball, he sees that pressure coming, and he pitches the ball back out. Can't give up the baseline. Garrison going for the pump fake, and he's got a shot blocker waiting for him on the other side and still finishes over a Beckway. He's got, the, he's got that wrap Hansbro does on his right leg. That's a, he's had a bruise there. It's just over the course of a long season. Now, you remember, I'm going to go back a little ways. You remember the old Pittsburgh Steeler lineman, Ernie Stotner, who used to wrap his arms up like that yeah. and then pour water on them so they would be like concrete. And I wonder if anybody's checked that, if Hansbro is out <laughs> yeah. there. He, uh, in fact, just recently passed away, did Ernie Stotner. Longtime Dallas Cowboy assistant coach. 71 to 50, North Carolina by 21. Hansborough doesn't look like he's carrying any extra weight down there. He moves much too quickly. <laughs> yes. Working on Noel, has his pocket picked by Ginyard. And Mike, that's a perfect example of what you've been talking about with Tyler Hansborough, that he gets the ball close to the basket, so all he has to do is make a move. Gist had to take a couple of dribbles before he could get in position to make a move, and North Carolina takes the ball. It's, a, it's, it's Hansborough dribbles with a purpose. That was just, you know, I don't, nothing's happening right now, and you dig in and you get a turnover. 73-50 North Carolina. It's that time of the year. How about G-Man's All-ACC team? Yeah, I think I think for the most part, they're no-brainers. I mean, J.J. Reddick is certainly deserving. And Sheldon Williams, I talked about, maybe the second-best player. Tyler Hansborough, maybe the third-best player in the league right now. Sean Singletary, what he has done at Virginia is outstanding. And Craig Smith, you saw him yesterday. They had a double-double for him. He has been really consistent. Well, a lot of people say, well, Jared Dudley, he's had a great year for Boston College, and he has, and that Dudley might be the best player on Boston College's team, and I think that you can make that argument, but Craig Smith is solid. He gets you, you know, double-figure points, double-figure rebounds, just about game in and game out, and I think he is the, he's the thing that makes that Boston College team go. And which team would be the biggest surprise? Would it be Virginia because of their wins, or would it be Wake Forest because of their losses? 
Well, I think you have to take some consideration here for North Carolina. I think that sometimes, you know, North Carolina was rated at preseason. They were ranked sixth in the ACC. Right. And it looks like they're going to finish second or third. Yeah. Virginia now, of course, there was no preseason poll in existence that picked Virginia at anything other than 12. And so the fact that they're sitting like at fifth at seven and seven is really amazing. But I think that's a really good debate. Is the biggest surprise North Carolina because of their much greater than anticipated success or Virginia given the fact that they've had any success at all? Absolutely. Uh, Dave Lato gets my vote for coach of the year. I think he's been remarkable to but, do what he's done there. Much like Bruce Pearl at Tennessee. Well, took a team with, with really has not done very much and has gotten a lot out of them. Dan, I think what, what Roy Williams has done is taught a young group the culture of North Carolina. Dave Lato has changed the culture of Virginia. And, I mean, that's, and, that's, and that's really tough to do. That's a very good point. But Dave Lato has, you know, much as Roy Williams has had some very good players to work with, Dave Lato has had some extremely solid backcourt players. And with college basketball being a guards game, Virginia's in a position yeah. where they can just keep the game close in Singletary and Reynolds. They've got guys who can make plays at the end to decide games. Look at Villanova. Absolutely. I mean, you know, or in Tennessee, you talk about it. You have, you have guard play and you can win. Oh, Terry almost with a well, magnificent Mike, dunk. Ohio State is another team that plays, you know, perimeter plays. Now, they have the, the big guy dials inside, but they, they play a lot of perimeter guys, too. Take a look at this alley-oop. This could have been majestic. Just, just couldn't uh, get it cranked up. Almost in that situation, you have to catch it, come down, and then try to do something with it. But, but you know, Dan, I'm going to go back. A guy who I think gets lost in the whole North Carolina thing, maybe Bobby Fraser. And, and I think that he, he has allowed a lot of these guys to do what they do and talk about solid point guard play. You know, with him here and Paul, it's the two, two freshmen who have come in and, and really have run the offense well. I think that's a really good point. You talked about Frazier at the beginning of this game where he didn't score against North Carolina State, and yet that was a tremendous, resounding North Carolina win. He's a guy who gets the ball where it needs to go to the person who needs to have it when it needs to be there, and I think that is the definition of a point guard. And, fellas, in contrast, you look at the teams in this conference that have struggled that have been disappointments. Wake Forest without a prolific point. Maryland without a pure point guard. Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech. That's uh, if you don't have someone that can control the tempo of the game, this conference will expose you in a hurry. 73-54. Just over four minutes left. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, Dan Bonner, and Jen Hildred. Rayshon Terry fouled on the way up that time by Strawberry. DJ's had a tough day. Been a difficult night for Strawberry. That's his third. Maryland does have an outstanding point guard among its uh, early signees for next year. Well, so we shall see. But Gary Williams' uh, program is one that has been synonymous with success, and uh, it would be a bitter pill. Uh, to swallow for them not to get into the NCAA for, for the second straight year. And one thing I think, Dan, that they've lacked recently is that big stud body down low that revolves. You talk about Craig Smith and the flex well, offense. Chris Wilcox kind of guy. Or, right? or Lonnie Baxter more, yeah. you know, and, and, and guys like that. Ryan Randall's of the world. Those big bodies who you could dump it down to and they could make things happen on the post. You know, Gist and Abekwe are more athletic than wide-bodied. I think that's a good point, and we've been talking about that today, and how many times have we seen the Maryland big guys get the ball inside and fail to finish? Yeah, that, that's a that's a frustration jump shot right there by Kaner Medley. Hadn't been part of the offense lately. Hansbro with a push-off on Gist, and we've got a timeout. 3.43 remaining here in Chapel Hill. North Carolina by 20. You take a look at our Dodge game summary. Uh, very difficult night for Nick Kaner Medley. Noel and Terry have been outstanding. And of course, hands for all business as usual. And uh, Jim Hildreth has more. Jim? Well, you know what, Tim? There's a certain fan here today you might recognize. Sylvia Haschel from the North Carolina women's team. Her team just clinched the ACC regular season crown with a win over number one Duke yesterday, repaying the favor that Roy Williams and his men's team paid her team. They were all there at the game yesterday to watch the women play, and who knows? Maybe they got a little inspiration. 
Well, that's uh, some rivalry in women's basketball without question. Uh, not just the Duke and North Carolina men, but the women as well. And Sylvia Hatchell does an outstanding job with an extremely talented team. That Ivory Latta is as much fun to watch play as any guy uh, in college basketball. Gist, not there. Hansbrough loses it, but Noel recovers. You know, you hate to characterize, Mike, any coach with a particular style, but I think if I would talk about Gary Williams and the way he likes to have his teams play, it all starts with that back-to-the-basket guy that you were talking about. They like to play in a high-tempo kind of game, but what you like to do is when you get into difficult situations, have somebody who can get his butt down there on the block, and you can throw him the ball, and he can score, and that's what Gary has been missing the last two years. Well, fellas, let's look ahead now for him, because Miami is certainly a winnable game. It's senior night. Nick Kaner Medley's last game. It'll be emotional for him. I think he's had a wonderful career. I told him before the game, I told Nick, I said, you've been one of the real pleasures for us to cover in the ACC. Now, you look at that. Miami, if you win that, you go to Virginia. You get to 8-8. Eight and eight, You take into consideration the toughness of the schedule, and it was difficult. Tournament Selection Committee will look at that. You still believe he'd have to win at least one game in wow. the ACC tournament? And I'm not, I mean, I'm not throwing that one at Virginia in the left-hand column. No, real not soon. at all. I think that's, that that that's going to be a very, very tough win. And so you're looking at seven and nine, and I think it probably two wins, yeah. you know, Thursday and then the quarters, and then that, and that helps you. See, but one of the advantages that some of these teams have this year is the extra day in the ACC tournament. You know, it's not necessarily a negative for these quote-unquote bubble teams that they don't get a bye, that they get to play an extra game. It's huge. I, I think uh, around the around the country, a lot of tournaments in that situation, the Big East, it's going to be a that's going to be a big deal. Another layup miss. This one by Strawberry. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why conferences like the SEC have gotten so many teams in the tournament yeah. over the last couple of years is yeah. they've had that extra day. That's true, and, and something else to consider because Alabama won today, Arkansas won yesterday. You look at some of these mid-majors, fellas, like uh, the Missouri Valley that comes to play, and we were talking about four or five teams at one point. We've now seen Northern Iowa begin to struggle. Um, it's not been as easy lately for Southern Illinois. They lost three of four games. If they don't get the four or five that they want in, that's going to help, say, in Indiana. They got a, a tough win at home today against Michigan State, and maybe even a Maryland, provided they went out and get something done. Uh, Dan, I like your perspective on all the years you've been covering college basketball. When did when did RPI really kind of seep in and become such a factor as a as a grading system in, in college basketball? Well, I think you take it back. It goes back to about 15 maybe years ago, maybe a little longer than that. But the, the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee was really trying hard to figure out when, you know, it really isn't comparing, to use the cliche, apples to apples. You're looking at teams. You know, what would Maryland do if they were in the Missouri Valley Conference, right. for example, yeah. when you, yeah. they can't play uh, in the MVC? So you have to try to figure out a system where you can sort of evaluate everybody and make it a yardstick that's the same. However, the one thing, Mike, that is important to stress to people is that I think the importance of the RPI gets overrated sometimes. It's Absolutely. Just one variable. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, when you get to the point where you're up there and people are talking about your RPI, you're not in. You're yeah. trying to get in, and you Absolutely. don't want that discussion yeah. to even occur. Yeah, See, I, to me, to me, playing against the best teams, how do you do against the best teams, and how do you do on the road? Yes. You know, that those two criteria should be at or near the top. And one of the things, Mike, that you see happen a lot in, in major power conferences, there's Copeland again, is that the teams play relatively weak non-conference schedules and then rely on the conference to toughen up their schedule. And that's why when you get down to these last four or five teams that are getting in, the tournament selection committee is going to take a look at what did you do with that part of your schedule where you had a choice. Yeah, and by the way, that's where I go back to this idea of the so-called bracket busters, the mid-majors playing each other. I think it did some damage to the Missouri Valley when you see uh, Northern Iowa uh, lose the way they did, when you see... Southern Illinois at home where they almost never lose a game in Carbondale losing to Louisiana Tech out of the WAC conference. I think that sometimes they do damage when they begin to sort of cannibalize themselves and it, that's the reason why you see six teams out of this or that league major leagues get in. A nice ovation 
for West Miller, and it's certainly deserved. Uh, and, and how about this? I mean, North Carolina, again, when everybody seemed early on that, boy, we'd really be happy at 8-8 eight and eight in conference, and they have another double-figure conference win total. Amazing. Amazing. They're going to go to 19-6 and six and 10-4 and four in the ACC and in solid second behind Duke. Now, Tim, I'll tell you something else, and I'm not sentencing Maryland to the NIT just yet. Please understand me, right. but... Right. The NIT for this Maryland team with Strawberry a junior, with Gist a sophomore, with Jones a junior, with a Beckway a junior, the opportunity for these guys to go out and continue playing, I think is very important. So whether they get in the NCAA tournament or the NIT, I think Maryland can turn it into a positive, something that will really benefit their program. Loose ball. And finally a tie-up. Tyler Hansbrough, we can close the book on him, fellas. Take a look at what he did. Well, Hansbrough let this game come to him, and uh, there was a stretch in the second half where he didn't get a lot of touches. But when he gets his hand on the ball, he normally clinches around the rim. So strong inside. Well, he, he's so strong inside. He runs the court very well. Doesn't get himself into foul trouble. Ended the game with 21 tonight. Bowers misses a jam. That's another one. If they made, Dan, if they made half of their layups, and I'm not saying they'd win the game, but it'd be, the crowd would be still in their seats at this point. Well, Gary Williams, if his numbers were right, he told Jen Hildreth that they missed seven layups in the first and half. And they've missed at least that many in the second They were half. down by, what, 17 at yeah. halftime, yeah. so they make all those. And they, how different is this game if it's a three-point game at halftime? And by the way, I, in just watching Gary and his composure along the sidelines, I've got the belief that he is okay with the effort expended by his team defensively tonight. That maybe he can build. He knows he's got to have these guys in the proper frame of mind going into that uh, vital final week of the Atlantic Coast Conference regular season. Now, Gary Williams is a great coach. Absolutely. And he is a great competitor, so he's not satisfied with losing the game, but sometimes if the effort is there, it's it's not easier to accept, but you, you don't get quite as upset by it. And I was, as, as time's winding down, Dallas, thank you again for being here. I, <laughs> I had my issues today with travel, but uh, it was great here. I don't get to see you enough during the season. It's been great to sit here with you again. Thank you, Mike. The pleasure's all mine. It's, it's really fun. We don't get to see one another because we do the same thing. Yep. Will Robinson tipped that one in. The crowd loved it. Senior from right here in Chapel Hill. Oakland pulls down the rebound. And I will, I'll be sure to let you know when my partner gets his art card in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants a walk on to put it, a shot up. Please someone put it up. <laughs> I think he's going for the senior citizen discount, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the way, I will move to the white tees. I'll tell you that. That's right. Well, I will move to the white tees gladly when I have my first anniversary of my 49th birthday. Well, when you start eating dinner at 4.30 in the afternoon, <laughs> then I'll really start to get concerned. <laughs> That's going to do it. Uh, Carolina Coronation on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Roy Williams' club. Now 19 and 6, 10 and 4 in the ACC. As you look at our updated conference standings, Duke leads the way. North Carolina, a solid second. NC State, Boston College, a couple of teams each with five losses. Well, Dan, G Man, it was a lot of fun. Enjoyed it, fellas. Glad I could join you to be here. Uh, <laughs> Happy birthday, Tim. Yeah, uh, glad I didn't get paid by the word. Let's get back to our studios in Atlanta. For my men, this is Tim Brando and for Jen Hilton. Tim Brando, let's go back to Mike Goldberg. You know, Larry, I want to leave this one alone, but I know you're laughing right now. Tim Brando <laughs> does get paid by the word. He is a very wealthy man. We all know that, right? All right, Timmy B., I'm sorry. That was just too easy. Welcome into our continuing coverage of ACC Sunday Night Hoops. So Maryland, in what we said could be somewhat of a must-win game, did not really show up offensively, Larry. How disappointing of a loss is it for the Maryland Terrors? Very disappointing for this club because they needed to have this one. They needed a big win, a marquee win, if you will, this late in the season. They didn't get it today simply because they couldn't make any shots. And I thought their uh, defensive rebounding was just terrible today. I thought North Carolina got inside and got a lot of easy baskets on them. Perry, Maryland having trouble getting those easy baskets to fall, as the guys talked about, is that a mental or a physical thing? 
I think it had a lot to do with North Carolina. I think Tyler Hansberry and the other North Carolina big people really challenged them on a lot of shots. And you have to give North Carolina so much credit, Mike. Nobody expected them, or very few of us expected them, <laughs> to be where they are right now. Roy Williams has to be, he and Dave Lato have to be running neck and neck for Coach of the Year in the ACC. Unbelievable job with a, group, with a bunch of young kids for North Carolina. For them to be second right now is just tremendous. All right, let's take it one step further. Can they challenge the team that's first? They've got them in the season, regular season finale. Could see them again in the ACC tournament. Has North Carolina truly closed the gap on number one Duke? Here's what I feel. Early in the year, the young kids were carrying them. During the middle of the year, the veterans were carrying them. Now come tournament time, you put both of those components together, and I think this North Carolina team now has experience talented youth, and I think, yes, they can challenge them in the ACC tournament. So taking it even further, not just the ACC tournament, is North Carolina a true factor, a true force come the NCAA tournament? Mike, I think so. And uh, the one thing I like about this game going into Durham, North Carolina, when they go from Chapel Hill over there to play, this North Carolina team is very good on the road. And now that they've gotten these freshman players and they've gone through one full season, they will have completed that season, that will be the last game. This is a much better team, I think, on the road than at home. So I would be very careful if I were Duke. Yeah, but I, now, Mike, I'm not saying that they're going to be able to beat them in Durham, the last home game for J.J. Redick and Sheldon Williams. I'm not counting on that. I'm counting more the ACC tournament on a neutral floor. And I will also say that Maryland needs to get a win at home against Miami. They need to win next week on ACC Sunday Night Hoops at Virginia if they want to get back on that bubble, a disappointing loss for Gary Williams' team. We're here till the top of the hour when we send you off to Pacific 10 Conference basketball. Pac-10 showdown between Cal and number 17 Washington comes your way top of the hour. We're going all around the world to college basketball, so don't be turning that dial.